Hello, I hope that you are having just a great, great day today. Today I got something very interesting for you. I recently picked up this collection, the best of Lee Brackett. Um, and we're going to be taking a look at her 1944 a short story, The Jewel of Bass, which is the first short story in this collection. It's about 52 pages long um, in this collection. Um, she was a little bit slower to read than some. Uh, and I actually read it in two days, not just one. Uh, it took me about, about, a, about an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes for me to knock it out. Um, this is my second short story that I've read by Lee Brackett, and I've reviewed it for you. The first one I reviewed for you. Um, so, and that one was Lord of the Earthquakes, uh, which I had in the collection of uh, stories that were about Lemuria or Atlantis uh, that I have reviewed for you with stories by Manly Wade Wellman uh, and others or that was in it. So I've reviewed that for you already. I wanted to do a bigger look at her. I wasn't super impressed with Lord of the Earthquakes. But then you never know, you know, just because your first story you read by somebody, you don't know if that's going to be, the, you know, one of the best ones, right? It could it could just been, you know, uh, one, one of the lesser ones, right? Uh, and that sort of thing. So I, I did some research, saw that there was a publication out there called The Best of Lee Bracket, decided to pick it up, and we're going to start reading it. And so I finished Jewel of Bass, 1944, uh, from last night, and I wanted to go ahead and review it for you this morning so we can knock it out. So let's go ahead and get started with Jewel of Bass by Lee Brackett, who was, who was a female writer during the pulp era in speculative fiction, which is pretty uncommon uh, for the day. She was trained by Henry Kuttner uh, and, and uh, C.L. Moore, who's another, um, who were married, um, and uh, C.L. Moore was another one, another female writer during the pulp era, so she kind of knew what that was like, and they kind of took Lee Brackett under their wing and kind of brought her up in, in not, a, not a dissimilar way to how Lovecraft had done that with Seal Moore and, and Henry Kuttner, both of whom were in the Lovecraft circle of writers. But uh, So this story is going to open up, we're going to have a married couple on a future planet um, who are who have taken a shortcut um, and they are uh, deep in uh, and, and so, so we're, on, we're on a future planet and this um, They've taken a shortcut uh, in, into a uh, a place, so we're gonna open up with them with them eating, um, walking around, that sort of thing for the first couple of pages, uh, and then uh, they are going to be uh, it, it, they're going to be attacked. The, uh, this couple uh, they attack each other a little bit. They actually they're actually a little bit they're actually uh, not super smooth, if you will. Like he'll say things and she'll throw things at him. Uh, that's what they'll argue as a couple. They're married, um, although you won't find that out for later. Um, but they're definitely lovers, and they'll refer to each other in, in, in similar like love lover terms uh, and, and that sort of thing. But they took a shortcut that he had recommended, uh, and uh, they are attacked by these mythical creatures out there uh, that are called the Narns uh, that are supposed to be from another planet of existence. Um, they're near... These forbidden planes, which you'll learn more about in the first chapter, you'll get a lot of world building uh, of where they are, the planet they are. There's a there is a mountain um, that is beyond the the planes, uh, and um, that mountain is supposed to be where the immortal bass lives in his jewel of destiny. Um, the immortal bass, according to all the legends, um, has created the world um, and still lives there to this day. He's a god. Um, and uh, he came from another planet, the third planet of the sun. And uh, uh, he is a uh, he's an interesting person. According to the myth, he came from the third planet of the sun. Uh, it was blue and green and had just one sun and one moon. And then he came over. Um, there are multiple suns here uh, surrounding the, uh, the, the world that are here. The, the lights go out near the mountain, coming towards them, uh, and they, they have darkness for the first time, which is a very paralyzing fear for them, uh, and then they will uh, uh, be, in, be attacked by, again, these, these Norn, and then these creatures uh, that are from another planet, and then, uh, and, and we're also told that Bass has created two androids, too, uh, and then 
they'll be captured and turned into slaves at the end of the first chapter. Uh, and there are seven chapters in this short story. So there you are. I'll go ahead. That, that's kind of uh, the, the setting, if you will, for the Jewel of Bass. Now, Jewel of Bass is a sword and planet story. Uh, it, it's not, not set on Earth, but it's, it's not, and it's got like androids, aliens, uh, and a character from, from, from Earth, uh, but who has colonized this, but it's a low tech feel. Uh, the, the, the male one of this couple, who's one of our point of view characters, is, <coughs> who refers to himself as a bard, and plays the harp, um, and has the harp with him. Uh, he, um, uh, they, they, their food, their clothing is leather, where right? it feels low tech, if you will, and sort of feels like a sword and sword and planet sort of style of a, a low, low tech uh, features. They're still on, on, on things. Uh, now, I disagree with this book collection, and here's my disagreement right here. If you read the Jewel of Bass, is actually listed here on the back and it says here uh, that these two people are, are that, that a shortcut had had led two young martians to an immortal god uh i don't remember any cues in this short story that says that they are on mars i don't remember them referring to any uh of the places on mars that would help you know that they were actually on mars um it does have uh more than one uh sun in the sky that they call sunfires um and um, and it has more than one, and they never set, uh, so the planet uh, is in light. Now, that could have been because uh, Bass created that when he created the world, right? He could have added those when he created them with, with, this, with, this, uh, with the Jewel of Destiny. That's certainly possible, um, but, uh, so it could be Mars, you know, uh, and, and it might have been the case that Lee Brackett meant for it to be Mars, but there's nothing in the book or short story rather, that says to me, hey, this is Mars. There's no, you know, features that were in Mars, like craters uh, that are called out, right? Um, no point does it say it's the fourth planet in the sun rather than the, the third. Nothing like that seems to imply. So this could be, um, it seems to me from the, sh from, the, from the context clues of the story itself, that this is probably not set in our, in our solar system. That would be, be somewhere else. But again, uh, I'll, it, it does say Mars on the back of the cover, so I, I disagree with that based on the context clues to the story itself. Although, it's, again, it's possible it's Mars. It's possible that Mar that was changed uh, by, by Bass, the godlike creature, character who you'll uh, meet in the short story. Um, I do give it, I'm, I, was, I was a little bit plummoxed as to what, I'm gonna, what I give it a short story as a rating. Would I give it a six or give it a seven? Uh, it feels a little bit between the two. I don't like to give halves. I never give given a half. Um, so giving Lee Brackett credit, um, giving her a 7 out of 10 uh, instead of a 6 out of 10. I'm rounding up. It's a 6.5, 6.6, 6.7. Um, it does have some pacing issues. Um, it's, it's, it's longer and from the pulps, which is unusual. It doesn't need to be. Um, uh, the, the female character in this does have some typical female character-ish things from the pulps. Uh, it doesn't really break out of it, the stereotypes of the characters in the pulps. Um, she screams, she passes out, uh, she's constantly nagging, right? She, you know, she seems like a typical female character from the pulps, uh, in the, the pre-women's era of, of, of fiction. So, uh, and, and that is not to Lee Brackett's character because again, she's a female, female writer. Uh, so she, she would understand that, that stereotypes. Um, and I've heard that she actually plays into those stereotypes sometimes more than the men who were writing at the time. Uh, so we'll see if that actually ends up being the case. It wasn't here. Um, I didn't find the female character, one of the two main characters of the story, to be particularly annoying. But just to put it out there for you, uh, it does have some pacing issues. It's probably five or six pages too long. Uh, so again, it's getting it dropped uh, to, a, to a seven. Um, and... Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm willing to go ahead and pick up the next short story in, in this collection. So there you go. It's Jewel Bass by Lee Brackett. Have you read it? What did you think of it? Did you agree or disagree with my thoughts here in this story? Um, if you enjoyed this video, please feel encouraged to hit that subscribe button because there's going to be a lot more of this following fantasy, science fiction, horror, and stories like this that blend science fiction and fantasy together. Um, if you, uh, and then finally, I just want to thank you 
taking some time out of your day and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're being pulled in so many different directions. So the fact you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. Thanks again and have a great day.